Um, my next question, uh, you lost 4-1 to Bray today. So yeah. how many points will you be finishing behind Longford Town this season? Oh, very good, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was absolutely atrocious. I went over to Abbottstown because we played in Abbottstown. And for those of you who know it, 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 the pitches there are so exposed. And it was really windy today. You all know it was really windy today. But it was unbelievably windy. Like, the break keeper took a kick out at one point and it arrived back to him, right? <laughs> like, he actually didn't. Nobody else touched the ball. Like, he couldn't even get it that far out. So... Uh, Bray were very good, I have to say. We weren't really on it. Um, and it was a dreadful conditions to play football and it was really awful. So I'm 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 throw I'm not paying much attention to it, to be honest with you. Um I'll say one thing though. How Bray, I, I'm not I'm not allowed to gamble and I, I don't agree with gambling in football too much, but how Bray are seven to one for the first division is beyond me because if they don't win the first division I I'd be amazed. I think yeah, they're superior. I actually, I was meant to tweet it earlier on when I seen the result, and I forgot. But I don't know how a Premier Division team didn't pick up Gary Shaw. I don't know how well, long. Oh, didn't, Shaw's didn't, how long didn't go in for him. He was good, but honestly, there's two other players today. I mean, your man Brandon Kavanagh is probably the standout player in both leagues. Yeah, he's I would agree. He is absolutely brilliant. I, today, every time he put his foot in the ball, I was standing with Niall Driscoll, the brave chairman. He's going, watch this. He didn't put a foot wrong. He hit the bar twice. Uh, they were, they, they, he was superb, you know, really. I don't know how Bray got him from Rovers. I was surprised. Yeah, I was surprised Bray got him, yeah. Like in a Premier Division club being from. I'm Amazing. shocked, man. Yeah. Well, I am genuinely Rovers, Rovers knew that Rovers 2 weren't going to happen. So they couldn't give him to another Premier club because he'd be playing against them, you know. Uh, so I, I think they decided to, to, to give him to Bray. But, I mean, he's brilliant. And they bought a fella from Malahide called uh, Darren, I can't remember his name, who was absolutely brilliant as well. I, I Seven to one, and people are just, you know, saying shells are going to walk it. Nonsense. Uh, absolute rubbish. Bray are really good, really, and big and strong. So... And uh, UCD are very good as well, from what I've seen. I don't think anyone will walk that league. You know, Athlone are strong. Um, uh, Galway. You know, Galway are full time. I mean, Jesus, you know. I think it's the hard. I think it's going to be the hardest first division in probably memory. I agree. As I said to, I said to one of our players today, I said it'll be easier to stay in the Premier than to get out of the first. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I don't know, but <laughs> um... uh, no, I ge genuinely, I, this, we would be if we were still down in the first division this year. I'd be looking around, going, Jesus, it's it'd be a total lottery, total, yeah. lottery, you know. Yeah. So really good, do you, but you know what it says? Sorry, the, just a point related to this, and I got shot down for this a few weeks ago. Is you know, if you look at the clubs, look at look at Galway, um, Bray, um, you, you know, uh, uh, Shells, obviously, uh, etc. And we really do have probably 16 clubs in the country who are really, you know, doing it, you know, uh, almost at a similar level. Like there's four or five teams in the first division who I think could be in the Premier. There's not a big gap between Drogheda and Bray or, or, or Finn Harps and Galway or Sligo and, you know, um, Shelburne. There isn't, you know. And it, it, that's why I still think we're very close to one, to almost one league. The gap really comes, and I mean this in a nice way because I'm a huge fan of these clubs. You know, it's Wexford, Cabinteely, or UCD, UCD just because of their set, not because the players aren't good, yeah, yeah. Know, but the setup. And and now, and Cove, now I saw Cove got hammered today, didn't they? Uh, Jesus. Yeah. I was hoping that I saw that Stuart Ashton thing. That's not great. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see Cove do well. I think they're a lovely club. But I, I do feel we've got a core of very good clubs who aren't very dissimilar, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas five years ago, I think there was big gaps, you know? Um, I don't know what other people think, but uh, whether people think of single league um, or uh, not. I think if we had more senior clubs, um, you could do an expanded premier and a sort of a, an expanded first, but the, the, the resources just aren't there to have a competitive sort of 16 yeah. team twice you know I, I i would love a bigger premier and i love a bigger first but just the, yeah. the teams just aren't there to bulk it out connor yeah the only you still hear about Kerry and kildare and mayo and you know what i mean that there could be you saw st francis want to go in 
Um, I don't know. I, I just I just feel that the, the gap isn't what people, you know, people always slightly, it really pissed me off when I was in the first division. You know, the way that the Premier Clubs looked down on the first division. And the gap, the gap wasn't there. I couldn't see the gap. Certainly between at least half the first division and the Prem, I, I couldn't see the gap. You know, yeah. I'm sure Dundalk, look, of course, you know, Dundalk and Rovers is different business, but um but anyway, no, it was a good it was a good run out today, but uh, it was I'd 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 watch out for Bray. I, I think they, they look terrific, really good, you know. Lads, if you have any more questions for Connor there, and uh, it's great to see Dave Rogers joining us as well from Arizona. Dave, how's life? You know, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, great, can hear you loud and clear. Great to see everybody. Connor, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, Dave, are you well? Yeah, I'm great. I'm, I'm, I still feel like I'm jet lagged over here, mate. Unbelievable, <laughs> crazy. What's How's everything? Going? What's the temperature outside there? Um, it's about twenty-seven degrees today, mate. It's and that's that's a cold day for us in Arizona. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> someday, someday we'll get out there, Dave. It's you know, I, I love the fact that years ago Jack Byrne went to where was it? Was it uh, to Holland? He went to play Holland. Holland yeah. yeah. And you know, I don't see why one of our players shouldn't aspire to play in, in the US. Well, like, Connor, do, more... do, do you know what, Connor? It's, it's funny you mentioned Jack Byrne because Jack actually signed for the team that I played for, Cambu. Get out. Yeah, I played for Cambu for two years. That I, I, I was there before I signed for Shelbourne. And when, when, Jack, when Jack's move to Cambu was, get, was getting put in place, I actually spoke to him and his father to give them a little bit of advice because it was... Wow. Um, it's, it was a great club, great little club for him to, to go and yeah. express himself. Yeah, and I mean, and he developed well as a player out there as well, I'm sure, you know what I mean? I think it's brave. I love seeing a kid who's got the balls to do that rather than Absolutely. take the safe route, you know, and in Holland they look after them so well. It's brilliant, you know, so oh, very good, honestly, yeah. Great great work on, on what you're doing at the club as well, mate. It's fantastic to see. Bit bit by bit, you know, you'd, Rome wasn't built in a day with these things, but we're... we're Look, as we just before you come on, we were talking about you know ultimately, like a lot of clubs, we need new stadia and our own training facilities. Yeah. I mean, I was just looking at what Bohemians have done during the week. They've done their link up with DCU to get good training facilities. They've got a new stadium. You know, you can I can see where the future is in ten years. There's a lot yeah. of hoops to get through to get there. But you know, like in Drada, we're a football town, like a lot of the you know places. A lot of the guys here on the on the call and stuff. Um, and the support is there and yeah. you know the potential is there if we can do it and uh, but you know we've got a nice squad for this year I've got some I was you know we've got some really nice good footballers a bit of experience with some of the younger lads um, bringing in people like Dane Massey you know it's just such a him and like Gary Deegan and like Gary Deegan was just snarling around the pitch today it was brilliant watching him but the great thing about somebody like Gary Deegan is you know, he, he's he, he's vocal on the pitch and I love seeing that, you know what I mean? He's bawling people out, but not in a bad way. He's, you know, encouraging, saying, let's do this right, let's do this right. I think we needed somebody like him there, so I was really impressed with him. But we have a nice squad, we've good, we've good talent there. If we click, we picked up Ronan Murray a couple of weeks ago, who's, who's a super footballer. This lad, is, this lad, Dara Markey, who we picked up from Pat's, if he clicks, he's, yeah. he's sumptuous to watch. He really is. A lot of these lads are only 23 or 24, you know? So, um, you know what? You made a great point there with the likes of Diga. And, and Gary was only a young lad when we, we were playing at Shells. But what, he's, yeah. what do you bring? And what Dane Massey will bring? They'll bring leadership. They'll oh, bring standards. Totally. You know, they'll, they'll set the tone. And that's only great for the young lads. And it's good for them to see senior yeah. players around them that will, that will fed, they'll feed off that. That environment, Connor. So it's going to be great for them. It'll be good. Look, you know, it, it, we've no, we, you know, when you go up like this, I feel. I mean, Shelburne last year, I almost felt they almost put pressure on themselves last year. Shells, I, I that's what I, you, you know, you can feel pressure at a club almost, mm -hmm. and because they made such big investment and like, and you have to applaud that, and they've made great investment off the pitch this year as well as yeah. on the pitch. But it felt, I felt pressure at Shells last year, and I don't know. I could be unfair, and I felt Ian Morris was feeling the pressure, and like he's a really mm -hmm. nice bloke, Ian Morris, you know. And I felt that, that, but so I've been trying even at the club, just saying, guys, just go and let's play football, let's enjoy ourselves, you yeah. know. Don't don't worry about what we will be where we will be at the end of the day, as long as you, you know, perform at the best of your ability. That's all we'll ask. Nobody's gonna, you know, nobody's expecting us to do anything. So what's the, what's you know, don't go worry. And enjoy it. Go smile and enjoy, and enjoy each and every game. Yeah, what's the point in playing football if you don't enjoy it? I mean, I was talking to Denny Corcoran today. Um, he was sitting on the sidelines and uh, he was coming on the second half. 
and we, the wind was swirling everywhere. It was a, horrific to play football. I said, Dinny, this is shit. I said, and he said, he's, and he, no, and he, and he said, it is. And he said, Connor, you think it's shit to watch? It's even worse to play in when, when the wind is so horrific. And, you, you know, it just reminded me that footballers play football because they want to play beautiful football. I believe this, right? I, I think when you go, even I remember myself as a kid or whatever, you know, the games where you, you know, you, you love it when you, when it's a beautiful goal or a beautiful move or like, that's the joy in football. Like football has to be about bringing joy to fans. I, I honestly, I'd rather lose three, three, two in a brilliantly fought victory. My manager would hate me saying this, but <laughs> they grind out the most <laughs> dour one nil because that's not, you have to entertain, don't you? Yeah, listen, it's an entertainment business. I think I think you're right. And I think and and look, I Dinny Dinny's point, I actually I, I can can absolutely say one hundred percent. Give us rain, hail, sleet, and snow, and we're playing it and we're playing it to the best of our ability. But as soon as that wind comes in, oh my word. I know. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then you've got to swirl everywhere and it's so I, I get his point. Yeah, yeah. So you got to just uh, anyway. So that so I'm not t- losing four one to Bray. I'm not bothered today because I, <laughs> we, we lost we lost three two to Dundalk last week in perfect conditions. Now Dundalk deserved to win at the end, and you yeah. could just see the strength of people like Magellani and Hoban and stuff, like and and Shields. You know, you can't. That's full time football. You, you could just see it at the end. You know, um, did you watch that, Kieran? Did you watch that match last week? It was a good no, match. our game was on as well, so I didn't. I didn't. I only seen clips. It was a great match. I did see. I seen um, the free kick, alright, by Murray. So uh, <laughs> that was the best part of the game. So I seen that anyway. And that was very good. I enjoyed that match. That. Yeah. yeah, but we and looked yeah, alright, Oshin, didn't yeah. we? I thought, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, we just. What's definitely. great about us is we've got two wing backs, Connor Kane and and uh, and Jimmy Brown. You know, who just bomb up the wings like they're two twenty-two year olds, right? And they've just got energy. So they're up and down and up and down the wings. And then we, you know, so that that just makes for exciting football. When you have two full backs, you just want to get forward like that. Um, it's good to watch. But uh, we're all still trying to work out what our starting 11 is. But it gives you a bit of confidence. When you know you can play reasonably against them, Doc, you think, yeah. hang on, we're, we're the I think, we'll Yeah, I think you, you have a good bit of balance in your team. As you said, you know, you have your experienced players mixed in with the young lads. I think that'll yeah. be it, really. You know? Yeah, and and look, you know, it would any, it's we all know anything could happen in this bloody league. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, I go to bed every night and I dream about us doing a Leicester, and then <laughs> and then I wake up and then I wake up and think I'd be quite happy just to get out of the, you know, just to avoid relegation. So it's, you know, this this is, but you you got you know what? As I said to somebody recently, when you go into anti any competition in any walk of life, you enter something to win it, right? Yeah. I don't believe in entering a competition to think I need to finish eighth. Right, I, I genuinely don't. I, I, I think you enter it to try and win it. Now, you might realistically, in the back of your head, think there'd be a long shot, but you, you have to enter it with positivity, going in and thinking our goal for this season is to avoid relegation. I, I don't want to hear that. That's Ollie Horgan there for you. Just what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie Horgan. Oh, oh, we'll take nice place. Glass, we'll take glass nice is place. always half empty. <laughs> I know, but he's brilliant. Look, he's the man's. Right, listen, he's playing. He's playing games. He knows what he's at. <laughs> and and you know, you'd you'd put any money on him doing it again. Like you really would. How is your squad looking at Finn Harps? I've not really seen much of it. I, I I was just saying before you come on, Connor. I'm quite happy with it this year. There's a yeah. The nucleus of the squad from last year has been kept, uh, and they've added a few guys in. We brought a striker in from FC United in Manchester. I can't remember his name off the top. And they, of uh, he scored a lot of goals for them. Oh, well, I'll be, yeah. um, so I, 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 I'm not, I'm going to touch wood here. I'm, I'm not actually worried this year for a change going in this season. I, I'm thinking, you know, mid-table, I'll take it now. Yeah. What about mm. Waterford? Is there any Waterford fans on? No. I don't think they exist. They have to be brought <laughs> in on loan. <laughs> well, seriously, though, like, I never see any Waterford fans. I don't have a problem with them, but I just never see them. Careful, <laughs> <laughs> <Terrible> cares, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they won. They probably they said only good loan now under the call. They haven't been pretty well, you know. Yeah, well, I you, you see, you just don't know. There's a lot of unknowns in their squad. You know, we have no idea. I mean, we've got them next Friday, you know, and uh, and I don't really know what to expect. Like, how do you do your homework on 
players that you don't really know. There's a few players yeah. you know. I said they've Oscar Brennan, haven't they, and a few others. Yeah. But, but, but you really don't know anything about their formations or anything. I don't, they beat Wexford today, didn't they? Did yeah, they won the one yeah, one nil. Um, I know you're not a betting man, as you said, but I think you are a great price next week. I think you're eight to five at the minute, but uh, you probably won't be that price come kickoff time. I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, you'd it, well if, and it's a big if. If we won at least for better hour, we'd be top of the league, I suppose. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> we are the early game on Friday. But the same would go if Waterford win their top. So anyway, it's uh, look. I think I think Waterford has taken a big gamble bringing in Kevin Cheedy. And I know, yeah, you know the guy, the guy is a football and an ice football legend in, in one regard, but on the other hand, does he know the League of Ireland? Yeah, I know. No, but you know he what? What's his yeah, but we said that about Sheridan, and you know, actually, you know, they they did quite well under John Sheridan, actually. For a pub team, yeah, 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 yeah team. for a pub. Gonna, gonna hang, hang on a minute, hang on. Hi, hi, John. Yeah, he's he's got the pints in. He's in the pub now. <laughs> he's got the pints in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cheers, John. Thanks. For... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> oh, he got he got he got a bad rap over that, didn't he? Oh, oh really. unbelievable. Yeah. But, but do, do you know what? Do, do you know what? On, on Justin's point, though, and it, it's a good point. It is. Uh, listen, any managerial appointment's always a gamble. But I think what I like to see, I I don't like seeing this merry-go-round that's gone on in the League of Ireland for years. Even when I was a player, yeah. it's the same merry-go-round of managers and yeah. the same mentality. And I, I think it gets to a stage where clubs have to take a risk and show a little bit of sort of, you know. Well, you know, from a, from, a, from Harp's point of view, Dave, we we appointed Ollie Horgan from an intermediate club, fan of United. Um, yeah. Nobody, Julian Dix from West Ham was in for the job at the time, and that was all. No but the media were talking about, it and I was going, "Oh Jesus, no!" But they took a punt on Ollie. Ollie's been there five, six years now. Exactly. Okay, yeah. we haven't set the world on fire, but he stabilised it. We're not the yo-yo yeah. team we once were. Um, yeah. I, I think he's probably been one of the best managers we've had since probably Patsy McGowan, and that was back to the Cup winning team in the seventies. You know, so yeah, yeah. you're right. Been, but 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 all he knew Irish football. He dealt with the Irish youth on, on their age setup. He, he knew yeah. where to go. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Kevin Sheedy. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't envy his task. Dave is right though. There was a merry go round, but there's been a shift in the last few years. Like Drotted obviously appointed Tim. Longford appointed Fenn before he. Did what he yeah. did. No, 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 no. Um, you be careful, Keo. You don't start, be careful. Don't start here. Yeah. But even Dara is, uh, was he was the number two, but that was his first job. So Lomper took a chance on him as such. Yeah. Um, and there's other examples of lads get Ian Morris obviously getting his first job. I know it didn't work for him last year, but he got them promoted in his first year. So there is managers starting to get more of a chance now. Uh, Buddy Collins saying for Louis Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, Tim, Tim's been Tim's done three years with us, which is yeah. you know even at a young manager's stage, it's quite you know, it's quite a long time actually. You know what I mean? That's really it shows great loyalty actually, and and he's you know he's achieved something. I think his aim was to get us up and now to try and prove it in the in the Premier. You know what I mean? So um, he's a very ambitious lad, and and rightly so. You know what I mean? He's played in the UK. He's managed. He's he's played in Scotland and England. You know and. Uh, I think he's very ambitious, but I like that, you know, and, you know, we know you have to recognize, you know, the one thing I've learned is it's, you do have to be a bit lucky in what you get with a manager. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I wasn't the guy who appointed Tim, you know, the guy before me did, but um, it's hard to know, isn't it? What you're getting. Like, there's a lot of people would be impressive in interviews, but you don't really know until they get their feet under the table, what they're going to be got like. The, uh, he's got one of the best number twos alongside him there as well. Like, oh, you know, listen. Ke the, Kev, Kev Darty and Dave, you know Kev probably. I'm sure. Yeah, he's one, do you know what kind of Kev's, Kev's? Actually, he's one of my best friends. Yeah, we speak. We speak, we speak regularly every week, and yeah. you know, even when Kev was a young lad at Liverpool, and yes, when, and when I signed for Shells, we've been best mates. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's he's an absolutely fantastic he, number two for Tim. Uh, well, uh, you know what, Dave? What's really more important than all these things is he's one of the nicest blokes I know. Right, yeah. full stop. Yeah, right, absolutely. forget football. He's an yeah. absolute gentleman, lovely family, just nice guy, and hard as nails. Now let's not let's not yeah, pretend yeah. that he can be you know, a, a <laughs> But you know, I was what? just going to say that kind of that he's like it's a testament to himself. Like look at all the people that are here talking about him, and anyone that's worked with him or played football with him knows what kind of a guy he is. Like, and it's it's no surprise that yeah. him and like, him and Tim will make a great job of that. 
Yeah, um, you're, you're right. And, and you know what it is? It, it's sort of, for those of you a bit long in the tooth like me, you know, when you remember Brian Clough and Peter Taylor and, and you know, you know, great management teams are about two people. I, I really believe this, you know, because oh, definitely, yeah. when, when I see them out on the training pitch and, you know, you know, you know, you know, Tim is very vocal on the train pitch. Like he's re he's out there in the middle of it, shouting and screaming. Kev's the guy taking a player to one side and saying, "You know, do this a bit different or whatever it is." And you know, he's watching a bit more. And then Kev would take something and Tim would do it. And they just they have just clicked as a couple. You know what I mean? As a as really a, as like a, a good cop bad cop situation, like. Yeah, but I think yeah. they can both go into both ro roles. You see what yeah. I mean? Like it's it's and uh, and and you know what? You can just genuinely know that the players like both of them, right? Yeah, that, and, and that's a big thing. Isn't that massive? Like, and there's a lot yeah. of fellas you go like, the, you know, they hate the manager, right? You know, but, <laughs> but, but they really, I I genuinely think because Tim's only thirty six, so he, they know that he was four years ago he was playing. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. So he he's got that relevant experience and stuff like that. So it's 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 a really nice thing to see. But they're both great with everybody around the club as well. And they're just they're both really good guys, nice blokes. And you know, uh, as I say, uh, you know, look, long may they stay. As I, you know, I'd be you know very happy with both of them. You know.